All right, hello, Charmaine here, and I'm excited to share this session with you. Um, I just got home yesterday afternoon from the hospital. I was there with my four-year-old son, Emmett, for the past 11 days. Um, we went into emergency um, because he was having poo, blood in his poo, and over the long weekend, it really was like just getting worse. And we were told that it was a anal fissure um, by a couple different doctors. And anyways, the symptoms just really shifted quickly. And um, yeah, so it's been wild. I'll share a little more as we get moving. Um, but there's a theme that I've been seeing a lot um, in different people posting that I follow on Instagram. Um, and it's just the idea that movement is medicine um and so one of my friends who owns a gym in canmore krista i just noticed she posted and she's like out camping in the wild but she's still doing her fitness that she loves and and she wrote you know in this post just like i do it because it's my medicine and i love that because i have been surrounded by different types of medicine the last couple of weeks um conventional medicine natural medicine all in between and so um yeah i want to share that idea that movement is medicine so I'll share more, but let's get moving. Let's get moving. Let's just start with a couple step touches, nice and light on the feet. And my intention for moving this morning, well, one was to share. I love sharing through movement what's going on and messages that come through, through life and through movement. So I love to share. So that's partly why one of my intentions is to share, kind of download the last couple of weeks of my life. And hopefully maybe there's some lessons in there for all of us. Um, let's go for a hamstring curl. Another intention is just to experience the post-movement, post-workout high that we can't buy. And that's in the form of all different beautiful chemicals in the body. Dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins. Let's go for some squats that get released from our muscles as we exercise. So our muscles are like little pharmacies in our body, releasing amazing different compounds, chemicals, hormones that make us feel good, make us feel loved, make us feel elevated, make us feel energized. Squatting, inhale, exhale, and let's go for a reach. And one thing that I think is kind of neat about the concept that movement is medicine is it changes the attitude around movement because I don't know where you're at with your relationship to exercise. I'm kind of like, often I want to do it. I'm like, yeah, I gotta move my body. I'm excited to be here. Like right now, I'm like, I want to be here. Let's reach for the floor, reach for the sky. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't feel like it, but I always love it when it's done. I always know how good I feel when it's done. And so I'm kind of wavering between those two. Mostly, I'm like, yeah, I wanna move because it feels so good. And I actually enjoy the journey. I actually enjoy this. But some days I'm like, oh, I don't wanna do it. I'd rather just do anything but. But then I remember how good I feel after. And then a third category is like, yeah, I have to do it. <laughs> Cause I am down. My mental, my mental health is not great. Tap. I'm not saying that today, but some days my mental health is not great. I'm in a bit of a funk, depression, sadness, heavy feeling. And so one of the only things that helps me with that is movement. And so then it's like, it's like a lifeline. It's really medicine then, because I'm like, I need this so I can show up for my kids, for my husband, for myself, for the world. And so... Yeah, that theme runs so strong that movement is medicine. So wherever you're at with your relationship to exercise, maybe you love it, maybe it's a no-brainer, maybe it's natural action for you, let's reach overhead, tap out, and maybe it's still a little bit of a chore. And so I invite you, think about what's your why. And my why has changed. It used to be totally appearance-based. I wanted to look sexy and thin and slim and whatever, toned. That's still maybe 10% of the game, but now it's more about mental health, longevity, and the appearance is like, yeah, nice side bonus, 
but it's not the main reason I exercise. And there's no wrong answer, by the way. The more layers of reasons why we exercise, the better. Yeah, because that keeps us more inspired, motivated. Yes, okay, hands behind the head. Let's do a couple of good mornings. Elbows are peeled back, heart is open, chest is open. Inhale forward, exhale lift. And so one of my coping mechanisms with life when I'm going through a challenge is I try to look for a message in the mess. Find a message out of the mess. So I was really reflecting on that the last couple of days as we were moving towards having a plan for Emmett and being discharged from the hospital. I'm like, what have I learned here? Well, God, I have, I have a very strong spiritual connection. I'm like, God, why? Why were we here? What was this all about? Of course, you could say, well, it's just about getting Emmett healed and home. But it was like, what about for me? Like, what's my message? What's my teaching? What's my learning? Let's go for a couple twists. Inhale to the left, exhale to the right. And there's been a few, so yeah, I'm excited to share. One is just that really watching how, I even did like these mini workouts in the room, five little minutes here and there to keep my sanity. So that's one message is just like movement is medicine um, and less is more sometimes, just a little bit is better than nothing. Something's better than nothing. Because 10 years ago when my mom was sick, I did nothing. <laughs> I became a total hermit. I didn't exercise. I stopped all my healthy habits. All right, let's do a couple toe touches. And then we're gonna, we're gonna do some strength. We're gonna feel strong today. And so that was a cool seeing the shift from 10 years ago. 10 years ago, movement was not medicine. That's not how I thought of it. I thought of it as a way of losing weight, a way of looking a certain way. I didn't think of it as medicine for the heart, the spirit, the mind. I just thought of it as you exercise so you can look a certain way. And so when my mom got sick, it was like all of my needs went out the window, my self-care, and I just started drinking alcohol a lot, eating a ton of food emotionally, and I stopped exercising. And so it was neat to say, wow, this is a health crisis 10 years later with my own child, and I coped way better with it than I did when my mom was sick with cancer. But it was some similar vibes, some similar emotions, some similar amount of time in the hospital, that kind of thing. Um, scary decisions, all that. And uh, I'm just like, yeah, self-care is everything. And continuing to move our body is a really big way of staying sane. All right, amazing. All right, let's grab our weights. Let's grab our weights. We're just gonna do a really nice, strong, wide sumo squat. Squatting down, bicep curl, calf raise. Alrighty, so grabbing some dumbbells. If you don't have dumbbells, don't wanna use them, you can still get a, a ton of benefit from body weight movement. As I said, the last couple weeks in the hospital room, I just did little bursts of movement and I did not have dumbbells. Whew. Inhale down, exhale up. Poof, lifting the heels if you can. Nice. <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. Another theme was gratitude, which sometimes people roll their eyes, it gets overused, that word. However, that really got me through because I had some dark days, some low days, some stress days, and I had to keep choosing. It's always a choice for all of us. What do I focus on? There was one day, great work by the way, squat, calf raise, bicep curl. There was one morning, I had my coffee in my hand and it was a little bit, it wasn't that hot and it wasn't quite as strong as I like it. And there wasn't quite as much cream in it as I preferred. <laughs> it was the coffee from the Good Earth coffee shop down in the, downstairs. And I had this thought like, wow, Charmaine, you can choose to focus on what's wrong with this coffee, or you can choose to focus on what's right with this coffee. Because there was, it was actually quite a good coffee. It just wasn't exactly what I wanted. And so I knew I wasn't gonna go back down to get a new coffee. So I, I said, you know what, I'm gonna really savor this and be grateful for it. And it changed the game, right? And we can do that with anything. Let's do three more. It doesn't, it could be a cup of coffee, it could be a hospital experience, could be so many things. We can choose what lens we look through. And I was looking through the negative lens. And so I switched my glasses to the more optimistic, 
grateful glasses and it felt better. Let me just say that. Ooh, great job. All right, we gotta work these backs. I don't know about you, but I've been hunched a little bit too much sitting in the hospital, um, waiting for doctors, etc. So let's work our beautiful back. So we're gonna do that in the form of a lovely, safe, slow deadlift, slight knee bend, coming forward, squeeze the back twice. Beautiful, strong rowing, coming up, squeeze the booty. Again, so make sure your core, your belly is turned on. <clears throat> and I do know, I'm sure, I don't weigh myself anymore, but I'm sure I might have put a pound or two on in the last, you know, two weeks basically. And the only reason I would say that is because my belly looks a tiny bit different and I'm pretty aware of my body, but, and I don't care, it doesn't bother me because I know now I'm home, I'll be able to get back in my routines. But the reason I share that is because that emotional eating piece was huge for me. Seeing the change between 10 years ago and now, seeing my mom go through her cancer journey and make a lot of decisions that I was hoping she wouldn't make and choosing different treatment paths I wasn't really, I didn't believe were the rest ones, but it wasn't my body, it wasn't my choice. Um, and then just watching her get sicker and sicker and pass away in front of my eyes. I didn't have coping mechanisms. I didn't know about self-care back then. So I, my only thing I did to deal with my sadness, my anger, my frustration, my fear, was I drank alcohol. Literally, I would, every day after I was at the hospital with my mom, I'd go buy a rum, I'd go buy a Slurpee, a Coke Slurpee from Max or 7-Eleven. Squeeze that back. And then I would get like rum. I would have like a little Mickey of rum and put like half of it in there. That's how I coped. And then I'd eat a lot of takeout food and not just eat it, but eat it till I was so full that I couldn't focus on my sadness. So I was a definite big emotional eater. Great job team. Ooh, I wanna share the lesson in the, the shift though. Let's do one more great work. Belly button to spine. I hope it's okay I'm sharing. I just love sharing when I have a little, when I notice something shift and I think it might help someone else. I love sharing, helping myself, helping hopefully you as well. Lift the heels if you want. Oh, last one. Okay, amazing. Let's just shake it out with a little bit of cardiovascular. Some people might call it like high intensity interval training, but we can keep it low intensity or go a little higher. Top hopes jumping jacks, whatever feels good today. Yes, keeping, if you are doing any jacks, keeping the ribcage tucked rather than being like this. Uh, you wanna tuck the ribcage under. That'll help keep everything tight. And then make sure to pull up on the pelvic floor. I'm very aware of my pelvic floor as I'm not gonna be 40 in about a year. Um, not that that's the only reason, but having a couple of vaginal births having a spinal cord injury that severely damaged the nerves to that part of my body. I've had my share of peeing when I sneeze or laugh, and so I gotta be really careful. And so wherever you're at with your pelvic floor, it's always a nice idea to think about just gently supporting that area, pulling up like you're stopping the flow of urine and gas, whatever you're doing, two and one. <clears throat> All right, quick sip of water. High fives, great job. Ah, so good, so good, cheers. Ah, all right, let's do one more round. I have those, beautiful. We're gonna do a slightly different combo though. So we're gonna do, we're gonna actually do a hammer curl instead of a regular bicep curl works a little bit more shoulders and forearms, so palms face together. Okay, and then optional, you choose either doing a narrow squat this time, narrow squat, hammer curl, or a lunge back combined with a hammer curl. Either combo at the same time or separate them. Okay, let's go. I'm feeling the lunge, I really like lunges, but if your knees for any reason don't like lunges, you can either do them not as deep, or you can choose to do that squat, okay? There's always something for everybody, 
And I just want to emphasize that so much. So take care of your body. It's the one place we have to live. Ooh, nice. So I'm not going to sit here and say I did not emotionally eat while I was in the hospital. There was definitely moments, especially at night, where I'm like, I deserve like some chocolate or some ice cream. And um, there was also one night I noticed I was just overeating. I wanted to keep eating. I didn't want the meal to end because I just like wanted to kind of wallow and drown my sorrows with food. And because let's be real, food is joyful, food is pleasurable, food is a distraction. And so the thing about it is, I think I'll always have that gene, <laughs> that emotional eating gene. But there's a big difference between one episode of overeating, a couple times maybe having a little too much sugar at night, compared to 10 years ago, it was all day, numbing out with food, rum slurpees every day, overeating every night to the point that I was sick on the couch. My husband would be like, babe, come to bed. And I'm like, I'm too tired, I, I can't even get up. And I would sleep on the couch. That was like 10 years ago. So I'm super proud because it's not that I'll never emotionally eat, but the instances are not as frequent by far. And I know when I'm doing it, I'm aware of it, which is a huge thing. And also, um, yeah, they're, they're not as severe of episodes. So that's a huge win. And that's, I think, all we can hope for is that we have more awareness, less frequency of doing a bad habit, and less intense episodes. And that's a win in my books. And whenever I help other women with emotional eating, I tell them we're not aiming for perfection. You might still do it once in a while, but we're just looking for improvements. Good job, let's do one more. Woo! Amazing. Shake it up. And that's, you, you know, celebrating wins is a huge part of my coaching style. So I was looking for those wins. All right, team. This time, we're gonna have a little bit of a wider stance with our deadlift. We're gonna do alternating this time. So we're gonna come forward. We're gonna go one row on the right, one row on the left, come up, calf raise. So just a little bit of a wider stance. Belly tight, coming forward, right row. I like alternating rows once in a while. Lift the heels because Here's why. You might notice you can get a little bit more depth, you can get a little bit more of a pull because you're putting all your energy on one side. And another good part about it is if there's one side that's not quite as strong as the other side, going one at a time helps us notice that. And then we can give a little extra love, a little extra attention to that side. Now, if your back is not enjoying anything bent over like a deadlift, I always recommend a staggered stance and then you just alternate the rows. Maybe you change the forward leg once in a while. Great job. Amazing. So we're working on posture here. We're working on upper back strength, we're working on core strength, lower body, lower, um, lower back strength slightly. And then of course, when we do our deadlift, it's our hamstrings and butt working. And then we're gonna do our calf raise. Great job, last one. Woo! Lifting those heels, yes. Amazing. Belly button is tight. All right, a little bit of cardio, a little bit of cardio. Let's do tap outs or seal jacks, okay? Yeah, our tap outs. Woo! Nice, shoulders back, chest pound. So yeah, a lot of kind of message, mess in the message, message in the mess. I just was like, wow, this is a cool thing to notice. 10 years and a lot of personal growth, a lot of retreats. I went to emotional eating retreats all around North America. I sought out the best coaches because I was like, I was wearing the pain of my emotions on my body as excess weight to the tune of 30 pounds more than I weigh today. And I could not get it off. No amount of diets, no amount of diets were helping me because I could do the diet short term, but then my emotional eating was so loud and such an ingrained habit that it would always overcome any weight loss from a diet that ever happened. So it was the inside job that I needed to do, right? It wasn't the outside, I didn't need another meal plan. 
I was a kinesiologist who studied nutrition in university. I did not need another more education on what to eat. I knew. I was just not doing it because my emotional eating was out of control. And so the last 10 years, I've done a ton of work on that. Had coaches, mentors, gone to seminars, retreats, read books, multiple books. If you ever want recommendations, I have them out the wazoo. And I've been coaching people on that topic because once I kind of worked through it, not that I'm perfect, but I've worked through it, I started to be able to help people with it because there's lots we can do. And it gives our power back. Three, two, one. Because I would have said, great job by the way, high five, that I was at a war with food. Food was my best friend when I was emotionally eating, but then as soon as I finished emotionally eating, I felt guilt, I felt shame, I felt disappointment, I felt disgust, I felt bloated, I felt unwell, and then I would go on this disgusting, awful, exhausting roller coaster with food, where it was my best friend and my comfort, and then it was my enemy because it made me so sick and so overweight, and so it was this push-pull energy and so coming to a good relationship with food where yes, it's joyful, yes, it's pleasurable, it's also sustenance. I also have a deep respect for food now. It's such a different game. So if you're resonating with this, this is like my number one favorite thing to help women with is overcoming, or not even overcoming, but having a better handle on any emotional eating habits. All right, team, let's move, let's move on. All right, we're gonna do some tricep work. Tricep work, ooh, I love doing triceps. So a couple different options, we can do overhead. Sorry if my armpits aren't shaved, I think they are. <laughs> Yay, win! I had my first real good shower yesterday after the hospital shower, which was a drizzle, and it felt so good to be home, not to mention the temperature of the water. All right, let's do our triceps. Because at the hospital, in the children's hospital, they have a meter on the temperature so the kids don't burn themselves. It was like lukewarm <laughs> and it was like really low pressure it was hard to find gratitude for that shower I'm not gonna lie <laughs> all right so tuck the rib cage under and then exhale up inhale down now if your shoulders are sensitive don't worry about it don't do don't push it I would recommend a kickback all right so you're here kicking back now let's let's use our mind to body connection Full extension, think about it. I always have to say this, friends, because this was one of my biggest shifts I've made in my life with my mindset. So I used to think about not wanting flabby, loose triceps, because they weren't, and they were cellulite covered. They were covered in cellulite, they had no tone, They and I hated them. I don't say that word lightly. And so I used to say, ah, oh, I don't want fat, flabby triceps that sag. And I kept saying that. But guess what? <laughs> Nothing changed. No matter how many workouts I did, how many diets, they are always missed the mark. They always looked flabby. They always had cellulite. And I promise, and I know in every cell of my body, this was the biggest shift I made in that area. Because I love my triceps now. And I'm sharing this because I think this might help someone out there. I started saying, as I learned in all my different courses I took over the years, that our words, our muscles, our cells hear our words. So if I kept saying I, flabby triceps, focusing on not wanting flabby triceps, well, our brain and our subconscious and our cells don't hear that I don't want it. They don't recognize the word don't. They only hear flabby tricep, flabby tricep. And so what the shift was, was I started saying, I'm so excited to have strong, defined, toned arms. I started saying that, and I'm not kidding you. Yes, I still had to put in some work and some action and do some exercises and all those things, but they started to finally shift. And now I love the way they look and feel. And I know it was the power of my words because your words create your action and your muscles and your cells in your body hear your words. Whether you say it out loud or you say it out in your head, your body hears it. Ooh, let's do two more. I love it, one more, so good. All right, team, we're gonna do a lovely, lovely, lovely kettlebell or dumbbell swing, okay? So holding the dumbbell, feet are just a little bit wide. We're gonna come forward and we're gonna squeeze our booty. Ooh, let's go. And if that doesn't serve you, because I'm all about what does it serve, what serves your body today? If it doesn't serve you to swing, 
it's a little bit more of an advanced movement. Squat to press, because the worst thing, the thing that breaks my heart the most is if someone gets tweaked in a workout with me and then they have to take a break. That's not the intention. Sometimes it happens, it happens to all of us, even if our form is great, sometimes we just, things happen. Usually when we're tired, usually when we're exhausted or stressed or not really present, that's when kind of tweaks happen. But yeah, just choose what's right for your body. Squeeze your booty. This is one of my favorite butt building exercises. And the same thing that happened with my triceps is now happening with my butt. So for years, years, I'm not kidding, I'm 38, almost 39. For years I would like, I was like, oh, I hate my flabby butt. I wish it was different. I always said, oh, it's so flabby, it's so saggy. And I only focused on what I didn't want. And now, you know what I say? I'm so excited that my butt is toning and lifting every day, getting stronger and stronger. Three, two, and one. And lo and behold, just like with my triceps, when I changed my words, I changed my reality. But just like with my butt, it's starting to respond. It's hearing my words, it's hearing them, and it's starting to tone. And so I'm sharing that with you because you might have a part of your body, your belly, your arms, your thighs, your butt, that you don't like the look of it, maybe your back. And if you keep saying, I don't want it to look like this, I hate this, I'm frustrated by this, keep focusing on what you don't want, you just keep getting what you don't want. All right, team, we're just gonna do some quick feet. Nice, low impact, nice and low impact. Keeping the belly engaged. Ew. Yes, and guess what else? It feels better. Your body is like, thank God, what? She's been so mean to me all these years. Now she's showing me some kindness? Hey, we can be friends. Maybe we can be working together instead of just enemies. Because as much as I was an enemy with my food, I was at war with my food, I was also at war with my body. And it was not a fun place to live. Let me tell you, I had no zest for life. I was just getting through the day, just trying to push through my work day, helping everybody but myself, and it was not a happy existence. Ooh, squeeze the bum, squeeze the legs, squeeze the core. Great job slicing through the air like the air is butter. And you're slicing through it with intentionality. Ah, three, two, and one. Amazing, amazing, amazing. High fives. Grab some water. We're gonna go back to the triceps one more time. You're amazing, by the way. <sighs> I think that's something that we can all do even more of, is tell ourselves that we are capable, strong, amazing, beautiful. And that doesn't mean we're, you know, whatever, narcissistic or anything like that. It just means we have self-respect and we are able to find good things about ourselves. That doesn't make us a show off or anything like that. All right, let's go for the triceps. You choose full extension overhead, kick back. And let me tell you, I had a twinge a few minutes ago when I was talking to you about my triceps and telling you that I really loved them. I had this twinge moment like, ugh, I hope somebody out there watching doesn't go, ugh, Charmaine, you're so full of yourself. <laughs> Maybe you did, but here's the thing. I think it would be better to be full of yourself and like yourself than to spend your whole life just, just degrading your body and criticizing your body and berating yourself for not being better. Why is that more normalized in society than saying, I really like myself? Because usually, you know, especially for women, it's like, oh, she's so full of herself if she likes herself. Like think about when you get a compliment most women, when they get a compliment, it's like, oh, I love your sweater. Oh, thanks, this little thing. I just got it at, like, whatever cheap store. Or, like, you know, I like your hair. Oh, I haven't washed it in days, you know? We're, as women, so good at self-deprecating because we don't want to shine too bright because that's how we were taught, most of us. It's not polite. It's not nice to kind of shine too bright. Three more. I say that's BS. That's bullshit. There's nothing good about just dimming our light for other people to feel better about themselves. That doesn't help the world. And there's a Marianne Williamson quote, I love it. Let's go for our kettlebell dumbbell swings. And you probably heard it. 
And it basically says, don't dim your light so others can feel, not feel bad about themselves. Shine your light so bright so others can have permission to shine as well. Because look, if I shine and I like my triceps and my butt and my body, and then it gives you permission to start liking yourself even more, and then that ripple effect is massive. Not just like maybe a friend of yours, maybe you can help a friend have better body confidence and a better life, but I believe on a level of the universe, each one of us living in a higher vibration of love and appreciation for ourselves and our bodies elevates the consciousness of the whole planet. So the dark stuff, the really dark stuff, like, hate to say it, but things like child trafficking, murders, wars, that stuff just won't happen and won't be able to happen because the light frequency on the planet will be so light. And that's my passion. Let's lighten our bodies, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, so that we can lighten the frequency of the planet so it's less dense, less heavy, and that dark stuff can no longer hide out. Three, two, one. Whew. Great job. All right, let's do those quick feet. And we're moving on to some core. Quick feet, balance in the core. Quick feet. Ooh. And so I used to think, oh my gosh, I gotta like wake people up. I gotta tell people all the bad stuff that's happening. I gotta show people. And now I'm like, you know what? No. Nope. Maybe once in a while I do that, <laughs> but mostly I'm just like, let me work on my own frequency, my own health, my own family. And then I can start to shine light around to other people and raise the frequency around me. And there's a ripple effect of that. And that's a lot. That's what, something I can control because it's really hard to live a life thinking that we have to control everything outside because we just can't. We can't, but we can control ourselves and our health and our frequency and how we show up. Great job, team. Squeeze that butt. Squeeze those thighs. Yes, you can. Four. Faster. Woo. Three, two, and one. Nice. Okay, I want you to pick your favorite movement before we do balance. What makes you feel good? It could be a strength move, it could be something like a cardio. And the reason I like this is because I do, I've been doing yoga recently. And at the very end, at the very end of the practice, they say, okay, do one thing. Usually in most classes, do one thing that you want to do that feels good, okay? I'm gonna go side lunge with a little hop because I want to work my inner thighs. And I want to work this plane range of motion. So you can join me on this. A little bit of a mix between strength, endurance, cardio, or anything. If you want to hit a different muscle group, if you want to do some cardio, if you just need to catch your breath, we're going to do balance after this, and then we'll go uh, down to the ground. Oh, amazing. Progress over perfection. Yes. And I want to be also totally transparent for a split second before I came to make this video, I was like, oh, I probably don't look great. No makeup, maybe put on a couple pounds, maybe a little more flabby at the waist. And then I went, nope, <laughs> thank you, but no thank you. I'm going, I'm gonna show up. I'm gonna share a message. I'm gonna let myself be enough for today. And so if you have nasty thoughts, so do I. We all do. It's a matter of, do we follow them? Do we feed them? Or do we shift them? And that's the only thing we can do for success is just shift them. And eventually, let me tell you, those thoughts come a lot less frequently and they're a lot less loud. And they're a lot easier to move away from when you practice saying, no, 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 I'm not going down that rabbit hole. I'm done. Because I could have changed outfits 10 times. I could have gone and done a full face of makeup. But I was like, no, I'm just going to go. I've got momentum. I've got excitement for this. I'm going to go show up. And so I just want to invite you. If you have those negative thoughts about your body, about worrying about your family, about worrying about the world, about all the things, you cannot control whether they will come in your brain. <sighs> like I can have worry thoughts about my son. I could do that all day and work myself into a depression through these negative dark thoughts. But I could also say, you know what? Cancel, Emmett's thriving. I know what I can do to help him. I'm gonna do that every day. And that's all I can control and then I move on. 
So I just want to share that works in all the areas. Cheers. Takes a little bit of effort. It's well worth it. All right, balance time. Balance time. You do one of my favorite balances. One of our lovely coaches from Ironside Fitness back in the day, Kristen, showed me this one. I liked it a lot. It's called Tipping Bird. One leg on the ground, hand on the hip. Opposite knee up, hand up. You're gonna tip forward. Speaking of birds, I have six chickens upstairs. <laughs> six chickens in my kitchen. They are a few weeks old. My kids are obsessed with them. And in a couple weeks, we'll move them outside to our backyard chicken coop. And we're gonna have eggs eventually. We're gonna have a little inner city farm. <laughs> so that's really been kind of cool. Nice, nice, uh, nice distraction from all this as well. Kennedy and my husband come home every night from the hospital and would do a FaceTime with us as the chickens and they grow really quick. So I was surprised to see how big they got. All right, let's switch legs. Put planting that foot into the ground, belly tight, knee comes up. Also, I just bought a carton of eggs and it was $10 <laughs> for 10, 12 organic eggs. <laughs> my husband just rolls his eyes at me because I'm like, babe, eventually, this is gonna be like a money saving thing, having our own backyard chickens. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, okay. Maybe in like 10 years, we'll make our money back. <laughs> Cause it's, uh, yeah, we, anyways, building the coop and all the things. But it's not just about the money, it's about, I don't know, the fun for the kids, having them have a little chore. It also feels empowering, I believe, to have some of our own food that we can create, not have to always depend on the grocery store. That felt kind of exciting to me. Woo! Hope, hope you switched legs. And if you have one leg that's not as feeling as strong as the other, you can always just give it more love. Notice your thoughts about it. Notice if you're saying something's wrong, because that's gonna change the chemicals in your body too. So when I talked about dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins, those elevate with exercise and positive thinking and gratitude, but you can really elevate the negative hormones like dope or, uh, cortisol and adrenaline when you're thinking, ah, why am I not stronger by now? Or I hate this, or when's this over? That kind of brings you down. So that's why we want to raise the dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins, and we want to try to keep the cortisol, adrenaline, noradrenaline low. And our thoughts create emotion, and emotion creates those chemicals. So we just want to be aware of that. All right, let's go down for a little bit of core, a little bit of core. I like core, I like having a strong core. Um, partly, and maybe think about your why, for me, my back, lots of you already know this, but I had a really serious back surgery. Let's go for a couple little punches. Back in, make sure your core is braced. Back in 2009, I was on the Canadian Olympic team for snowboarding, and I had a devastating crash from about 60 feet in the air down off a of big, big air jump down past the landing of the jump to my tailbone and immediately lost feeling in my legs well actually my feet were on fire but i could not feel the other parts of my legs i couldn't move them super terrifying went to the hospital in an ambulance went to Banff first and they said we cannot help this gal she needs to go to calgary got an ambulance to calgary was in for surgery a few hours later nine hour surgery and they literally had to pull hundreds of shards of vertebrae from my spinal cord and rebuild my vertebrae. So I had what was called a burst fracture. All that to say, that is why if I keep my core strong, my back does not cause me any issues. But if I let my core get weak, my back starts to get pretty angry. All right, let's stretch forward. Show some loving to our lovely backs. All right, amazing. Let's, okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna pull the knee into the chest, pull the knee into the chest, pull the knee into the chest. I learned this at yoga the other day and it starts off kind of like, eh, whatever. <laughs> After we do like 50 of them, it's a really good one. And it's also nice because it kind of releases the hip flexor. If you want a more intense, you go a little faster. Pull the knee into the chest, pull the knee into the chest. Great job. Yes, core tight, core tight, nice. I like, 
I think it's so cool because there's so many types of movement. Sometimes I go to Pilates classes, sometimes I go to yoga. Strength and weight training is my wheelhouse mainly, but I like to incorporate other little types of things. Let's do 10 more, nine more really, crunching it up. Oh, nice. You're almost there. I think we got four, three, two, and one, beautiful. All right, head down, feet are up, feet are up. And we're just gonna do little baby crunches twice. And then we're gonna lower one leg, one arm. If anybody wants to use a dumbbell, definitely add a little bit of intensity. So you would do it like this. You'd go two baby crunches and then lower. Awesome work. Two baby crunches and then lower. So nice. Two baby crunches whew, and then lower. Ah, amazing. Crunching twice. Oh, it feels good to move. Whew. Amazing. I love it. You got this. Whew, keeping the lower abdominals tight, tight, tight. Three, two, and one. All right, team, we're going to finish with a front plank. We finish with a front plank. So coming onto your forearms. This is it. This is the end of the session. Pressing up through the shoulder blades, keeping your belly tight, and then pulling off the knees, holding it here. If you want to, you can do a hybrid where you inhale down to the knees, exhale off the knees. Inhale down to the knees, exhale off the knees. Inhale, exhale. So another option is holding it from the knees. Let's make it strong. Pull the elbows towards the toes, squeeze the bum, tuck the tailbone under, press up through the shoulder blades, Think everything tight. Pull your kneecaps up. Ten, nine, make sure you're breathing. Think of something you're grateful about your body, your heart, your lungs, your butt. Four, three, two, and one. Ooh, sit back. I would just send in some love to my butt. <laughs> oh, you did amazing. Breathing in through the nose. Ah, out through the mouth. Audible exhale, amazing. Let's walk over to the right hand side. Just do a quick stretch in through the nose, out through the mouth. Ooh, beautiful. And then walking over to the other side. Ooh, amazing. Breathing in through the nose. And since I didn't go live Monday because I was in the hospital, um, that's why I, uh, partly why I'm doing this recording this morning. Um, and it is Saturday, the kids are running around upstairs. So I'm not gonna do a long stretch today. Let's go for the cat cow. However, there's previous bonus stretches, the 15 minute stretches we often do. If you're feeling like, yeah, I want a little more stretch, I want a little more relaxation time, then feel free to jump into one of my previous stretch, long stretch sessions that we always do on Mondays. Ooh, awesome job. All right, let's do a quick glute stretch and then we'll leave it there. And then if you have some extra time, you wanna do some extra stretches, you can do that or you can use one of my last um, awesome bonus 15 minute stretch sessions to follow along if that's more your style. All right, let's lift the leg up. Coming through for pigeon. All right, well, I hope my intention today was to just share some cool messages around gratitude, emotional eating. Those are kind of the two themes that I've mostly learned in the hospital. Um, and yeah, just so grateful to be here with you, grateful to be able to share. That's part of my DNA is I don't feel fulfilled I don't feel totally fulfilled if I'm not sharing with other people my, my passions and my gifts. If I just keep it all to myself, then I start to um, notice that just doesn't feel good. So thank you for wanting to have me share with you. I appreciate it. Let's switch legs. It doesn't mean I'm, not, I'm nothing if I don't share or if I don't have a business or whatever. 
that's a big part of my journey of life is just to realize I'm enough, whether I'm sharing or helping or helping myself or helping no one, <laughs> I'm still worthy and enough, but it's kind of a different vibe. It's like, I just want to share because it feels good and it feels exciting. Um, so thank you. I'm very grateful for you watching. If anything resonated from today, love to hear from you. You can always message me. And if you do really resonate with the emotional eating part, that was a huge, huge, the biggest change I ever made with my weight. That's what I had to work on to break through my weight struggles because no diet was gonna be the answer. It was an inside job. And it was actually, I learned so much in those 10 years. Um, and so I love to help women just, you don't have to spend 10 years. I can just help quicken your learning curve, sharing everything that I learned and what worked. So if you're ever looking for a coach in that area, you can always chat and see if it would be a good fit because that's a journey I love to go on with women um, because it's so exciting. It's a, such a getting a good relationship with our body and with food. Those are my two favorite things to help women with. So if you need help with either of those things, you could always reach out. All right. Great job today. Such a pleasure and an honor to share with you. I love you. Give yourself a big hug. If your body's calling for more relaxation time, more stretching, more flexibility, then I, I really invite you to honor that and jump onto the next segment, the stretch. And I love you. Bye for now.